Yeah, I remember coming back to town after uh, being off off at work, and uh, it may have been their CD release party, and I, I remember listening to the songs that we'd written and uh, thinking to myself that, you know, they were really going to make it. If you don't like that, well, you kiss my ass. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stick around for the prick. This one, I hope you can hear the words. This is for all you people sucked in by the religion thing. This is called Alcoholic Christian Angels. <laughs> Uh, that was the Staghound X rehearsal night. And uh, we comes in, we gets ready, everybody's arranging, we're getting our coats off and stuff, and all of a sudden I hear, oh, this is my latest tune. And Alcoholic Christian Angels comes on. And right away I knew that it was about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there and I'm like paralyzed because, oh, it was hard hitting honesty. It was brutal. <laughs> and I could tell, you know, it was, every word was forcefully meant. And so I I goes down in the basement of the Gibbard Street house there where there's nothing but caverns. <laughs> caverns of carpeted basement. And I just had to go down there and wait till the friggin' song was over. I just couldn't bear to be amongst anybody at that point. It was kind of upsetting actually, truth be told. Yeah, I've seen them spew their shit to capitals But Jesus Christ can let your agency But they're the only ones who live in castles While congregation lives in poverty Alcoholic Christian A long, long time ago A long long time ago. There was this guy, his name was Charles. Charles used to phone me all the time. Some nights he'd phone me four or five times in a row. He was a serious dude. Something like, hey, my name is Charles and uh, I'm the manager for Peter Anthony. And uh, Peter's in town, he plays guitar, he's got a great background, lots of history. And I said, Peter who? Peter Anthony. Sorry, not interested. And I hung up. Five minutes later, the phone rings again, and it's Charles, the agent. Red-headed guy, slim, about 5'10", drove a taxi. Was no agent. Well, nobody really knew about too much about Pete when he rolled into town. I mean, he, you know, he came in on a, in a little wreck car, you know, with jammed full of stuff, all his CD collection and guitars, and and I think the car just rolled in on its last breath, and he may have even been arrested that same night. It wasn't a bad car. It was a pretty good car, man. <laughs> and uh, I needed a brake job, though. The brakes were seized, though. But uh, it cost 200 bucks, and uh, I had 280 bucks, so I, I bought this car out of the driveway. Uh, I found an insurance slip in the glove compartment. One got a travel permit, loaded all my gear, guitars, amps, which is basically all I had in my stereo, my albums, which go everywhere. And uh, all my music came with me. Anyways, I had enough to put gas in the car. I came to town 
with $55 I came on December 5th, or whatever year I came.